cards and can be uh, deepened in terms of word use by reading and listening outside of class. So absolutely, yes. Thanks a lot, Mark. I think that leads really nicely onto um, a question from Monica. So then how can you make passive vocabulary into active vocabulary? I'm sure you could probably do a whole talk on it, but any any tips now? How can you make, so you mean uh, words that students recognize, but they're, they're unable to use? I mean, I think like any skill, um, we get better at speaking by speaking, right? And so by creating conditions in which uh, students feel comfortable using their language and maybe by asking them to use particular pieces of language in speaking activities, we can push them to use those passive activities. I'm going to make a comment here, which I don't want anybody to take in the wrong way. But where I work in, in Mexico, I see a lot of a, a kind of approach to speaking where they, the, the students stand at the front and they speak to the rest of the group. In Spanish, we say exponer el tema, right? And I think we need to get away from that kind of speaking activity. We, we need to, uh, when, when we're gonna ask students to do speaking activities, communication activities, don't worry. Well, what I mean is set them up so that there are simultaneous speaking activities going on. So everybody's working in small groups, talking to a small number of colleagues so that they don't feel too stressed about feeling, speaking in front of the whole group. But don't stress about the fact that you can't give feedback to everybody or you can't hear everybody's mistake or everybody's mistakes. The, the very fact that your students are engaging in meaningful, productive languages means that language is developing. You don't need to correct everything. You don't need to hear every, everybody. You just need to create opportunities for people to engage in meaningful languages. And so by reducing that stress of speaking in front of the whole class and using small group work, then maybe students will be able to put their passive vocabulary to use. Thanks very much, Mark. Great answer. Um, Right, so we've just had another question. Um, we've had lots of questions. I'm going to read you that one first, Mark, and then um, I'll get back to my scrolling. Uh, so when, um, so this is from Hanan. When a student comments or reflects on their performance at the end of the lesson, should we draw his, his or her attention or mention any grammar or lexical mistakes? Uh, and also on a side to that, should the teacher actually go over their reflective writing? Okay, there's a couple of questions there. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, we do have to talk about students' mistakes. Yeah, absolutely. I, do, I don't think adults and uh, older teenagers can learn language without us talking about grammar. But that doesn't necessarily mean that we need to present or explain grammar rules, right? So, yeah, if, if students do a transcription task, for example, like the one that I showed you, um, then we would we would want to talk to them about the grammar problems that they have or any piece of writing. We will want to focus on certain grammar structures, maybe not all of them, but we may want to, if there's persistent errors, yeah, we do need to draw their attention to them and, and try and help them improve on those specific mistakes. If the question is about giving corrective feedback on reflections or kind of journal tasks, I think it's kind of like the general answer would be no. Right, because we want students to, we want it to be completely focused on meaning, right? Mm. But I don't want to be the one who says that you should or shouldn't do anything in the language classroom, right? I mean, the whole point of self-reflection is to focus on the learning process. So it probably makes sense for the goal to be that, and then we can focus on grammatical areas when we're doing other written work or other language work, if, if that answer, does that answer the question? Yeah, no, it does. It does, Mark. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. No, thank you. Um, okay. So Anita's asking, how fast can a regular learner change into an independent learner with no tutor? I suppose the first question is there, is that actually what the goal is? How, how far? Okay, if you've got no tutor, then you have no choice, right? But to be an independent learner, uh, I well, don't no, know. No, sorry, sorry, Mark. Just to um, just to clarify the question, they, they're saying they haven't necessarily got not not got a tutor. They're just saying how long would it take to perhaps reach that reach that stage? Uh, I mean, it do, it doesn't take long to introduce some kind of self study strategies, right? So you'd have to we'd need an operational definition of what you mean by independent learner. But if you want somebody who studies lang studies vocabulary outside of class, finds opportunities to encounter language out of class in terms of like reading and listening online, mm. then it's simply a case of helping the student find relevant sources um, of, of reading or listening in this case, 
uh, and then giving the student, showing the student some strategies for how to work with text, like some reading routines, listening routines would work. I mean, those things can be set up in a question of weeks. I mean, I, I don't think it needs to take very long at all. It's just a question of demonstrating strategies to students. Right. And then gradually yeah. adding more strategies as you go. I, th I think we need to demystify this idea of learning strategies. I mean, they, they don't need to be anything complicated. They need to be study vocabulary, find ways to read and listen out of class, find ways to use language out of class. And those things can be can be modeled quite easily, I think. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, thanks very much. Mark. I'm going to ask you one more question. Sure. Uh, the question was, Mark, when will we see you again? Well, I'm gonna, there's going to be a repetition of this webinar for Latin America on, I think, next Tuesday. I think that's September the 8th. Uh, it will be around 4 or 5 Mexico time. So that's like 11 p.m. Uh, UK time. It, I mean, join us then. And when you will see me again, well, I guess that's up to Will, right? He's the one that chooses the speakers, right? So if there's something relevant that I have to say, uh, I have, if I, you know, I have information on the topic that's relevant for a Macmillan webinar, I'd be very happy to give another talk, of course, right? And um, yeah, I mean, uh, any questions? Um, I, I was going to give you guys my email address. I think it's on the next slide. I can't remember if it is. Let me check. Uh, I'm an academic consultant in Mexico. If you, have, if you have any questions about today's talk, feel free to drop me an email and, and I'll get back to you. Okay. Thanks so much again, Mark. That was just brilliant. Thanks for those answers, uh, for answering those questions again as well at the end. Um, everyone else, I'm really sorry I couldn't ask all of those questions. There were quite a few more, but we, we have to stop at some point, um, <laughs> to, to put it politely. Um, so, Thank you, Mark, once again. Thank you, everyone else, for joining. Uh, I've got to say thank you very much to uh, the the person behind this whole thing. She's, I, I describe it differently every time. She's there. She's just kind of there. She's holding up this whole thing, um, making sure that it all runs smoothly for everyone involved. So, Federica, once again, thank you very much for uh, for helping us with this and, and making it such a smooth, such a smooth, smooth uh, session. So, uh, as you can see on the screen there, we've had a, a question from some of you um, asking about the certificates and actually asking about the slides. You're going to get the slides and you'll get the certificates in an email from us uh, in the next 14 working days. I'm just going to hide that video. Actually, it's in the way. I'm going to push you to the side, Mark. Um, so, yeah, so within 14 working days, you will have your certificate emailed to you. So, please just be patient. Wait for it to come. It will get there. Um, also, uh, in the meantime, you might want to check your spam, your junk folder, um, just to make sure it hasn't gone in there. Uh, and also, uh, you can add help at macmillaneducation.com uh, to your uh, address book, and it should um, it should help it arrive in the right place. So slides, certificate coming to you. You don't need to do anything. So as uh, some of you will know, um, thanks, Mark. Thanks very much. Um, so as some of you will know, uh, some of you won't perhaps, but this webinar is actually part of a larger webinar, webinar series that we're running right now. It's happening these weeks uh, that we are in. Uh, and it, that, those, those webinars are actually part of a much larger program that we've got running at the moment uh, in order to help all of you get back to class um, with a positive uh, learning focused mindset. Um, and we're trying to do all we can to help you with this transition to whatever scenario you're actually working, you're actually going to be going back to uh, soon, if you are. Um, so if you go to macmillanenglish.com slash back to school, um, you will find all sorts of resources there to help you. We've obviously got these webinars and we've got all sorts of other stuff there. So go and take a look. Uh, the four pillars that we're focusing on based on a very large survey we did this year um, is on assessment, bridging the gap, learner independence, and social and emotional support. Um, so please do go and take a look at that and use all the resources. They're completely free. We're giving them to you. We want you to have a very positive time at this time um, of um, what's happening to the world with COVID. And we want it to be as positive and um, uh, as positive as possible for you. So just so you know, as part of the um, as part of our back to school program, uh, we've got we've focused one of the pillars on learner independence. Obviously, you've just seen an entire learning uh, 
um, learner autonomy talk from 